They are the most common birth defects in children, craniofacial malformations, and they can cause a host of other health problems, too. So joining us today is Dr. Richard Moltini of Children's Hospital and Regional Medical Center. A children's one of the few hospitals in the country capable of doing some of the most innovative craniofacial surgeries, and we're happy to have you here. Thank you, Joyce. Pleasure how, to be how, back. Oh, and Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Uh, how often do you see craniofacial malformations in children here in the Northwest? It's sort of surprising. We'll see 1,500 children a year, of which 500 are brand new diagnosed children with these anomalies each year. Wow. How many did you treat last year? 1,500? Yeah, that means 8,000 patient visits. That's, That's a incredible. lot of children. So it's more common. It's a rare birth defect, but it's more common than we might think. Correct. There's common diseases such as cleft lips and palate. Mm -hmm. Most folks know about that. And that's a big percentage. Mm -hmm. But there are hundreds of other rare diagnoses that have combinations of craniofacial abnormalities associated with them. What is the cause? Well, that's a very good question. Part of the research of our craniofacial center is going to be to answer those questions. Almost all of them have a genetic predisposition. Mm -hmm. There's a tendency or a genetic connection. But each of them are a little bit different. And we don't know in all different of those children. Different chromosome or different Correct. some genetic factor that makes it different one factor. from the other. Exactly. Uh, yep. Tonight uh, on King 5, yes. Jean Anderson is going to be introducing us to a little girl. Her name is Katharina. Right. Tell us about her condition. She has one of those very rare syndromes. It's called Stickler's Syndrome. Mm -hmm. And it's a disease where the bones of the skull, they're actually separate when a baby is born mm -hmm. so that the brain can grow. They have, the bones have to remain separate. Hers were fused together. At birth? At birth. And fusing means that the brain cannot grow and that the skull takes on a very abnormal shape. And so, in fact, what's had to be done for, for her is to allow those bones to be reopened and spread and to have her entire face, which was contracted, moved forward. Incredible. With this halo device that you will see tonight. And tell us about Children's Hospital and its role. Right. It's one of the few um, right. medical centers in the country that can do these kinds of very dangerous, complicated procedures. That's right. Many can do a cleft lip or palate, right. but these types of syndromes take an enormous team of experts. We have 19 different disciplines, 40 different people who work on our craniofacial center to handle patients like this. They're very complex. You can just think of all the organs that are involved, vision, and hearing, and mouth, oh, yeah. sleep. I mean, it, it goes on, and, and it takes a very, very complex, well-tuned team to really manage these kids. And what a gift to us that you let our crews inside to see what's going to happen with Katharina tonight. Well, Thank I think you. you're going to enjoy it. Well, and that uh, is coming up again tonight. Uh, Dr. Moltini from Children's Regional Hospital and Medical Center. Uh, if you'd like more information on the work that Children's does with craniofacial abnormalities, log on to king5.com. The information is right there. And join Jean tonight for a King 5 Children's Health Link special. It's called A Crown for Katharina. It's the story of this remarkable little girl we've been talking about with this very rare birth defect and the radical and uh, dangerous surgery, really, that could change her life forever. That is coming up at 8 o'clock tonight on King 5.